In this video, we're going to use the YouTube API in PHP to get the details for all the public videos from a specific channel. If you're new to working with the YouTube API in PHP, you're going to want to check out part one and two of this series where we get things set up. In part one, we create a new project in the Google Cloud Console, which is necessary to communicate with the YouTube API. We also set up our code with the Google API PHP client package. Uh, and then in part two, we look at a specific example. We get a general feel for working with the API, reading the documentation, that sort of thing. All right, so that's a good place to start. Or if you're already familiar with working with the uh, YouTube API in PHP and you just want to look specifically at what we're covering in this video, getting all the videos from a channel, well, then you're in the right place. So with all that preface aside, let's jump right in and start off by looking at the code we're going to be building upon. So here's my code that establishes a connection with the API. I've got my composer autoload uh, pulling in the uh, outside classes we're going to be using from that Google API client. Uh, I've got my API key set up, create a new instance of the Google client, uh, identify myself with my API key, and then with that client, we can create a new instance of the YouTube service. And then via this service object is where we will have access to all of the YouTube, uh, YouTube data API methods. And for our task at hand in this video, the method we're going to be using is the list method under the playlist items resource. Uh, and the reason we're going to be doing this is because every public video that is uploaded to a channel uh, is actually assigned to a special uploads playlist. So we're going to query for that playlist. That's how we're going to get our videos. It's a little counterintuitive. You would think there would just be a method where you could pass in a channel ID and get all the video uh, information back, uh, but there's not. So this is the way we're going to go about doing it. So knowing that the first step in this process is figuring out what the uh, special identifier is for this uploads playlist. And it's always going to be the channel ID that you're querying against prefix with the letter U. Uh, to see what I mean, let me pull up YouTube and I'm going to find my channel ID. The way I'm going to find it is I'm going to click my icon on the top right and go to view your channel. And then in the URL, you should see your channel ID. All right, so this is my channel ID. Let me just copy this over to my text editor. And to get my uploads playlist ID, I'm just going to prepend it with the letter U. All right, so that's what we want to query for. Um, the query itself, uh, following along in the notes, is quite simple. We're going to reference the playlist items resource. And then upon that, we've got this list playlist items method that's uh, part of that Google API client. Uh, in terms of the data we want to get back, we're going to request the snippet details. And then uh, here's where we specify the playlist ID. You can see I just put in my playlist ID there. So let's bring this into the code and see what we get back. All right, once again, I'm using my existing code here, just building on it so you can see we're running this query using the service object that I had already uh, set up. We're getting everything back in this response variable. And so I'm just going to dump that to the page. So here are the results. We get this playlist item list response uh, back. And then within the items property, we have an array of five items. And each item represents one of the videos. So if we click on that, we can see a bunch of meta information about the video. But specifically, if we go down to the snippet details, we'll see our uh, data for the video, things like the title, the description, thumbnail information, et cetera. So we're on the right track. But a thing to observe is that we only got five videos back. Uh, so let me just zoom out again. So I'm going to minimize my items. You can see we only got five items back. Uh, if we look at the page info in this response, you can see that the total results for this query is actually 93, but we're only getting five at a time. Uh, the reason for that is, is because uh, five is the default amount of videos that you're going to back, uh, get back when running a query like this. Uh, we could increase this. If we add the max results parameter to our query, we can up this. So that would look like this. We would say max results. And we could give this any number, but the max amount of results we can get at a time is 50. All right, so let's start there. I'm going to go back and refresh our response. All right, now we've got 50 items in our array. We have a lot more data coming back. But it's still not all of the data because, again, if we look at the page info, there are 93 uh, videos uh, published on my channel at the time of this recording. So in this situation, if we want to get the rest of the videos, we actually have to make another query. Uh, and as part of that query, we need to tell the API that we want the next batch of videos in this query. Uh, and the way we do that is with some page token information. So scrolling back to the top of this response, you'll notice there's data for things called the next page token, as well as the previous page token. And this is how we can page through our data. So for example, uh, let's take this next page token. I'm just going to manually show this. So I'm going to copy this token. 
and update my query, adding an additional optional parameter called page token. And I'll paste in that next page token. All right, let's refresh this. All right, now you can see we've got 43 items, uh, which makes sense. We're requesting 50 items at a time. In the first request, we got the first 50. There are 93 videos total. So in the second request, we're getting the remaining 43 videos. Um, you'll also observe at this point that the next page token is now null because there's no more videos to retrieve. Uh, but we now have a previous page token, so we could actually go back to the previous page if we wanted to. So now that we understand how this page token system works, let's think about how we could put this to use in an actual interface. Uh, and to demonstrate this, I'm going to go back to the notes that accompany this video. I have some code I want to pull over. So I'm going to scroll down. We're under the section next previous, and here's a uh, sample we can work with. So let me just copy all of this and bring it into our current example. And before I run through what this code is doing, let me just show you what this looks like in the browser. All right, so what I've got here is I'm basically just outputting the information for the videos and our results. I've got the thumbnail for the video and the title. And then at the top, you can see there's a link to take us to the next page of results. So if I click that, I see a different set of videos. And then at this point, I see a previous page. So I could go back to the first page of results, or I could just uh, continue proceeding forward, uh, paging through all the videos that belong to my channel. All right, so that's what it looks like in the browser. Let's rewind to the code itself. Uh, starting at the bottom here, we are looping through the videos, and this is where I'm producing the output. I've got the thumbnail image and the title. Um, above that are my previous and next page links. And all they're doing is linking to the current page, but including page token information. Uh, we can see that again if we go back to the browser. You can see the page token is part of our query string in the URL. All right, now where the page token is coming from, if we rewind to the HTML, um, from the response we get from YouTube, we are looking for things like our previous page token and our next page token. And we're storing it in this variable called previous page token and next page token. And that's what we're using to decide whether to display these links. And then if we are displaying them uh, to fill in the query string for that page token. All right, then rewinding even further uh, in the request itself, you could see we're passing in that page token variable, but we're dynamically getting it from that query string using the get uh, super global. And if that is not available, let's say we're coming to the page for the first time and we don't have a page token, uh, we can use the null coalescing operator to just uh, set this to be null. And uh, as a result, the query is just gonna get us the first page of results that YouTube has for us. All right, so that's a basic paging system using that page token information. Uh, but let's say we wanted to just get all the videos at once. We don't want the user to have to click links and go through paging through the results. Uh, what we could do is simply just set up this request as part of a loop so that it grabs multiple results, accumulates them together, and then when we display the page, we have all of the data that we need. Uh, once again, if we go over to the notes, I have some code for this. So let's see this. Uh, this is going to be down under the last section in the notes. Get all the videos in a single page request. So once again, I'll just copy this over, bring this into our example. All right, and I'm not doing any fancy output in this example. I'm just dumping uh, the videos uh, to the page using our uh, dump helper here, but we should get the idea. Let's load this in the browser. All right, and there you go. We've got all 93 videos as part of this array. All right, so looking closer at that code, here's our while loop. And you can see within the while loop, here's our request to the API. Uh, and dynamically, each time we're passing it the next page token, which you can see after the request, we're getting that next page token from the response that we just made. All right, and then uh, with each request, we're taking the response we get back, so our response items that contains our videos, we're merging it together into this videos array. And that's what accumulates all our videos. So at the end, we just dump them. All right, we've got some basic mechanic in the while loop. Um, basically, this is going to make sure we stop when we get to the end of our results. In other words, when the next page token is null, we should no longer do this. 
Um, we do have a, a start point here. Obviously, when we first start, the next page token is null because we haven't made a request yet. So we need something to get us into the while loop. That's what this is doing. It's basically saying, while we don't yet have a response, we're going to continue and do the while loop. That kicks us off. And like I said, this will be what uh, stops us when we're done. So with that, you've got two different strategies for getting all the videos from a specific channel. And of course, which strategy you use is just going to depend on the goals of your application. Um, now, a footnote I will mention is this idea of paging through results applies beyond just searching for videos for a given channel. Uh, if you're doing a general video search, let's say you're looking at like the most popular videos on YouTube, you're querying for that. Obviously, you're going to get many, many results in that instance, and this whole page token uh, system would work there as well. All right, now I'm gonna wrap up this video. Uh, I hope you'll continue to watch though, because in the upcoming videos, we're gonna switch gears from just retrieving information from the API. We're gonna look at how we can start to alter information via the API, do things like edit the details about a video. That's gonna require setting up an OAuth connection. So I'll cover everything you need to know to do that.